dedicated on Saturday evening at 5 p.m. Uh, the congressman's schedule did not allow her to be part of that, but she insisted on joining us today to uh, wish us well and to also address our constituents. So, so anyway, thank you all so much, and I so uh, I'm so I'm so excited about the highway being honored for for you all, uh, for the Fox Trotters. Uh, that's very important, and I apologize so much. I actually have to be a toddler bluff and had invited this woman named, uh, State Senator in Nebraska named Deb Fisher, who's running for the United States Senate in Nebraska, to speak at this event of ours in Poplar Bluff. And so it would be really bizarre if I didn't show up at the event to which I invited her. So please, please forgive me. Uh, for her not coming, but she will be the next United States Senator, and I'm going to be sure to tell her uh, how important the uh, equine industry is to our state. But she is a state senator already in Nebraska, and then she and her family raise cattle, so she at least has familiarity with the livestock industry. And, and so I just wanted to tell you, I mean, what you all do in this industry is so critical to our state and our state's economy. And I do worry, not so much with Foxtrotters per se, but with what the government, uh, or perhaps I should better say the Humane Society of the United States is trying to do to our animal industry, whether it not, you know, it can be cattle, it can be pigs, it can be horses, what have you, but I, I worry that not only are they extending their reach far beyond what their mission is, uh, but they are obviously trying to interfere with the economies of our state. Uh, whether it was dog breeding in the past, uh, we just feel very strongly that they're going to try to do something to get the government to restrict uh, the number of animals that we can keep on our property, as well as impose new restrictions and regulations governing the treatment of our animals. And, you know, I've been paying close attention to the soaring industry with Tennessee walking horses uh, in Tennessee, what the APHIS is doing with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So I just worry that even though the problem isn't really with foxtrotters, I just worry that things start to move. And, and HSUS is behind all of this. And last year, as a matter of fact, we asked, we, we put an inquiry into the Treasury, Department of Treasury's Inspector General for Tax Administration. Uh, that, that actually, that part of the Treasury Department has jurisdiction over the tax status of organizations. And as you all might know, HSUS is, is a 501c3, which is a charitable organization. They are not supposed to do any lobbying whatsoever, but yet they totally involve themselves in lobbying and spend extraordinary amounts of money so, in so doing. So this is under review by the Inspector General now. And just so you know, Inspectors General of different departments in the government are actually independent of that. They're not politically appointed. Uh, they do not have, they don't do, generally speaking, what the heads of those departments even want. They're on their own. They're, they're law enforcement people. And so they're doing right now uh, a general review of HSUS and, and, and the types of activities they're, in which they're engaging that go far beyond the purview of any five kind of charitable organization. And we haven't gotten an answer back yet, but they continue to just say we're still working on this. And these investigations take months and months, usually. So just to give you an update about that. Uh, other than that, we have, we have uh, an important farm bill to get finished in the Congress. It has not, it's gotten caught up for the first time in my lifetime, I believe, in politics. Um, which is really sad because we've got a lot of drought assistance that's necessary for the western side of our district, obviously Douglas County being part of the, one of my westernmost border border counties. But we have because of the drought so we're having forage issues and and there is part of the current law that expired last October that would help uh, producers with regard to drought assistance, forage assistance, feed assistance and the like. Uh, we passed that through the House. I actually wrote the bill, uh, got passed through the House, but now the Senate decided to go home seriously in the middle of our debate on the House floor. They just left town for the month. And so we have been told that they will take up at a bare minimum the drought assistance piece when we get back in, 
I guess I go back next week. I've been home for six weeks and I'm really kind of going to go back to DC, but we're only be there for about 10 or 10 business days before we're back home again for campaigning for the election. So anyway, that's the status of things. Uh, very little is going to get done, obviously, because of the elections. Uh, I will tell you, outside of of the livestock industry, the Congress has a lot of work to do, in which it has not done. Uh, very disappointing to, to many of us who actually like the policy side of our jobs better than the politics side. Uh, we've got 200, over 200 tax breaks that are due to expire by the end of the year. Those have to be completed. We have about, we have to find $1.2 trillion of budget savings over the next 10 years by the end of the year, or across the board cuts will come into place $600 million billion from defense, $600 billion from domestic spending. Uh, if we don't find the cuts ourselves, and third, we have to make sure the government stays in operation uh, at least until this, we can finally get the Senate to pass a budget, which has not happened in about 1,100 days. So, we have all that to do before the end of the year, and we'll be working 10 days in D.C. in September, and then we're expected to be home doing campaign work. We probably should, as far as I'm concerned, be staying in Washington getting our work done. But I am not in the leadership, and so I don't make those, those final decisions. With that, uh, I just want to thank you all, and I want to congratulate you on, on really making Missouri shine with regard to our equine industry, particularly this big show, and I'm willing to take any questions that you might have on any issue. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> this may not be a question, but it is a comment. You talked about um, assistance to people for forage yes. for their for their animals yes. and uh, you know other things and horses. We do mostly horses here, right? And you know we do have cattlemen that have Missouri fox trucks right. and use them on their farm, right. right? Ranches, etc. But the other half of this, of that, is the backyard horse. It is the kids that have a couple of horses, right. or it's somebody that ha that has a little backyard breeding operation. Um, it fuels their sport, right, so to speak, and it is part and a big part of the industry. If you were to separate those working horses on the big ranches, etc., from the horses that are the backyard horses. Right. For, for lack of a better description, I, I think you would cut the industry in half. Okay. And that would be incentive of horses are multi-billion dollars for this right. throughout the United States. It, I, I mean, that would be 50% of those horses would be gone. Actually, that's a very helpful thing to, I, and, and I'm not certain. I mean, the horse industry, per se, would be, I mean, if you raise horses on your property and you feed them grain versus, or you let them out in the pasture, yes. grass, whatever you use, you would normally be uh, eligible for the forage assistance and the feed assistance. But okay. I don't know about that. I can't answer the question, Christy. Would you know? I don't know about this. You're right, the backyard yeah. horse. I don't think that that so would qualify. But you're totally correct, and I never, I didn't. Uh, I think if you're, it allows so many, and I don't know if that's five or over. Yeah, five there's, over, there's but just a certain. Uh, that could be something we can look at. Yeah, but that is a good idea because we're going to have to yes. go back out at this again since the Senate's already, since the Senate has now committed to come, to doing something. Um, hopefully, they heard enough from folks back home. Yes. But, but let's. I'll, I'll call the D's, my staff in D.C. on our way um, to back over to Willow yeah. Springs. Because I That's a good see, idea. I need mean, to see what happened when we had the downturn in the economy and people could not feed their horses because they couldn't feed their families. And then we had so many starving right. horses. Right. And the amount of, of um, I guess, abuse, you would call it, because people couldn't feed their horses. Uh, feed their horses. And, and they had so many of them, even though they weren't uh, some of those people were prosecuted for that. Yeah, I mean, and the whole horse slaughter issue is a whole different issue. Uh, that's yeah, that's another one too. I mean, we did not at that time we did not have that option of horse slaughter, and it is part of our industry. It's an ugly part.
Michigan, and we were on the edge of that drought. So therefore, you know, we had paid available at a little higher price. But it really went up when the people from out of state, from down south, came up and drove you know, the price of it to $12 a bale. Now we, as the backyard, $12 a bale would be pretty nice around here. <laughs> Well, Ava. 